The second half of the high school football season underway as is Friday Night Hits right now. I'm Mark Whiteman. Thanks as always for joining us. This is where things really get serious, right? Region games commencing as seasons will make or break over the final month. 5A Region 2 kicking off in Duncan, the 60th all-time meeting between rivals Burns and Spartanburg, and it's where we find Chase Justice for a Sparrow Financial Game of the Week. We're kicking off region play with a bang inside the Stadium of Champions as the Burns Rebels play host to the Spartanburg Vikings in what is the 60th matchup between the two schools. Nixon Field is the place to be this Friday night. Winner positions themselves nicely in one of the toughest regions that the state has to offer. First quarter, freshman running back Trey Segura kicks the night off with a few broken tackles and a lot of green grass in front of him. 60 yards to the house and gives his dad a big hug to get the night started. Rebels in control up seven to nothing early. Vikings looking to capitalize on plus field position. They get the ball to Rael Senghor in space, but he gets popped by Armani Weaver, who shoves Senghor out of the play, picks up the loose ball, and heads 60 yards to the Rebels' house to increase their lead to 14 to nothing. Vikings down 14 to two in the third quarter. TJ Johnson throws one up to Justin Rice, who makes the full extension grown man grab to set the Vikings up in plus field position. Very next play, TJ Johnson takes matters into his own hands, finds a little daylight and cuts the Rebels lead down to five. Now 14 to nine. To the end of the fourth quarter, Vikings on the move, that is, until Big James Oates undercuts the pass and rides into the sunset. Burns wins over Spartanburg, 21 to nine. Play offense wins games, but defense wins championships, and our, our defense proved tonight they got to be one of the best in the state. I mean, what a heck of a job just finding a way to win and, and not and bending but don't break. The Burns Rebels will turn their attention to a road date with Boiling Springs, while the Spartanburg Vikings will set their sails home for a matchup against Gaffney. Reporting in Duncan, I'm Chase Justice, WIFF News 4 Sports. Chase, thank you. What a win for Burns. The two favorites to win their region in 4A, Greenville and Westside getting together for their league opener. Rams haven't lost in September. The Red Raiders rested after their bye week, looking to extend their win streak to three in a row. Serene Stadium always popping, and what a game this is when the Red Raiders and Rams get together. Westside went right down the field on their opening drive, so Greenville trailing seven to zip. Bryson Drummond. KD mostly. What a snag. Red Raiders tie it up late in the first quarter. Start of the second. Westside would go for it on fourth and one from their own 27. They convert and on the very next play, Cutter Woods, Josh Williams, and Williams. I see a five. Turns the one yard pass into a massive gain. Dragged down just shy of the goal line. The Rams would score in the very next play. It's 14 to seven. Westside then after a Greenville turnover. Woods Perfect ball to Jay McClintock. Gets the Rams back in the red zone. They'd cap the drive with another score. And Brian Lane's West Side team takes a 21-7 lead into the half. And they get the 28-14 win over the Red Raiders on the road. Eastside's come a long way this month. Three straight wins after an 0-2 start. And they went a ways to see Emerald Vikings. Not where you want to be. Backed up on their own one. And Eastside's defense comes up with a safety. Scoring the first points of the game. So 2 0 Eastside. Eagles with the ball now. Calvin Banks, straight cash, homie, gashing the Emerald defense around the outside, deep into Vikings territory. And as the second quarter begins, the drive still going. Banks punching it in. Eastside 35 to 12 over Emerald. Lions on the prowl. Daniel going for their 42nd straight regular season win. This one against Walhalla. Scoreless in the opening quarter. Colton Chapman letting it fly. Jason Bish looks it in. Lions go on top 7-0. Same score, same quarter. Jakari Bennett finds a cutback lane. He is pushed out inside the five-yard line. And Bennett would score on the very next play as Daniel gets a 52-10 win over Walhalla. All right, let's show you a few scores. Ren beating Fountain in 48 to seven. Chapman all over Carolina 57 nothing. Seneca beating Crescent 41 to 14, and Riverside over Wade Hampton 49 to seven. The BHP Bears bulldozing folks so far, averaging more than 360 yards a game on the ground, rumbling to a 5-0 start, hosting a Powdersville team, hoping to hit their stride in the region race. Bears putting up 51 points per game. Patriots looking to get rolling out of their bye. And this is a nice start. Jaden Pepper, he's a hot stepper. Chunk Gain gets Powdersville 
right on in close. And then as they're right on the doorstep, Keegan Reed, the quarterback keeper, and he gets his way in. Bears march down the field, however, in response. Marquise Henderson caps the drive with a game-tying score. BHP just getting started. They put up a lot of points in this one as they've done all year. 56 to 28 over Powder Hill. To the Choppa. Sky 4 and the Harvest Moon over Liberty, hosting to a champ Abbeville. Both programs 4-1 and one for the Panthers. They are still the kings of this classification. Carson Norman, jet sweep, lead blocker. They're calling. He's hauling 44-yard gain for the Panthers. That gets him close on the very next play. It's going to be Jalewis Hayden. And this is an Abbeville touchdown. The first of the night for the Panthers on a night that there were many. Abbeville, 40-3 winners over Liberty. West Oak at four wins for the first time since 2009, but this is a tough one against Pendleton. Bulldogs have scored at least 40 in every game, and they led 40 to nothing in the second quarter over the Warriors. Luke Gray connects with Am Scott, shaken and bacon, and he is dragged down right about the 10-yard line, and a couple of plays later, look at this play right here. Gray to Abijah Webb. Okay, 24, go up and get it. Pendleton puts up 60, 61 to be exact, and they're Shut out win over West Oak, 61 to zip. Boiling Springs and Dorman could be fighting for a playoff spot in the coming week, so their region opener tonight is a big in first quarter. No score. Dorman's Bryce O'Neill rips it, but Treshawn Taylor soars for the pick. He's got nothing but green grass ahead of him. Bulldogs strike first on the pick six, 7 0. Boiling Springs, same score into the second quarter, and the Cavs. They would get cooking. Jarvis Pearson, trucking. Got my chips cashed in. Dorman snaps a three-game slide, 14 to 10, over Boiling Springs. We're taking a quick timeout. Plenty more region action you'll want to stick around for. But first, it's mic'd up with JL Man head coach Scoot Watson. Pull the bottom of them out. Don't have them tucked. All right, formation. Look for them numbers we need to be looking for. Definitely going to be a pass on third and long. Like I told you before the game started, it was going to be a physical game. Oh, no, we got to go for two. I need one of y'all tackles. Hey, you can't bend over. You got to step and get big. What kind of game we got tonight, boys? They're being soft. Appreciate it. Woodmont coming off a hard loss at Seneca last week. Looking to rebound against JL Mann. The Patriots 5-1 and one this fall. Pick it up first quarter. Woodmont already leading 6 nothing. They go for an ensuing kick there. Michael McClellan, he scoops it off the turf and will take it right to the bank for payday. Mann goes up on top 7-6. to six. Later in the quarter, Nasias Morrison, the handoff for the one-yard run. 13-6, JL Mann and the Patriots. They are just getting started into the second quarter. Ethan Anderson hitting McClellan and McClellan doing his thing on the way to the timeshare. Patriots go up 19 to 6, go on to win 56 to 18. All right, welcome back. Let's keep it moving on Friday night. Hit Southside Christians coming off a massive region opener. Win over rival St. Joe's heading to Dixie tonight. The Hornets already 2-0 in their region, but trailing the Sabres 28-0 at the half. Southside Christian running their offense in the third quarter. Othan Chandler, and he is running right into the red zone. That's a big gain right there. He gets dragged down, pushed out of bounds, just shy of the end zone. A few plays later, Bryson Duck. Waltz is right on in, 35 nothing. Southside Christian Sabres looking to add on, keep the offense moving. But later in the quarter, Dixie's Tyler Glazer comes up with a nice-looking interception for the Hornets. Not enough here, however. The Sabres have won three in a row. They beat Dixie 35-7. to Teal Hanna rolling into region play, going for a fourth straight win over the Malden Mavericks. Well on their way to that when we arrived. Jackets up 27-0 in the second quarter and driving. Brandon Cunningham picked off by 
Tyzen Jameson. So nothing doing there for Hannah, but into the third, Eli Hollinger finds Josh Donald. His dad, Eric, part of the WIFF family, got to be beaming like a proud papa tonight. Hannah's still going. That's Katie Patterson into the timeshare. Teal Hannah, 62, Malden, 7, the final. 96 in Blacksburg, part of the 16 2A Region 1, all six with a winning record at the season's halfway point. 96 at 4 and 1, just enjoyed their best first half since 2018. The Blacksburg Wildcats leading the 96 Wildcats 6 0. That's 96's Gabe Hackett scoring from three yards out. Extra point, no good. We are all even at six. And Blacksburg's Chon Zabonner. You're going to see him right here, and he is in. The two-point conversion would be good. Blacksburg goes back up top, 14-6. to six. We got Wildcat on Wildcat crime. Back and forth they go. Zay King for 96. He scores. They would take the lead in the third and go on to win 33-20. to 20. Eyes on the sky over easily green wave crashing into the blue flame of Pickens. Easily up 21-7 at the start of the second. Jay Stoker, Caden Davis shoots up the sideline, waves at high tide, a three-touchdown lead for Easley 28-7. And Easley approaching the red zone again, and they would just keep on scoring. This is Dante Willingham getting some snacks from the corner store. Green wave roll away, 63-21. The Woodruff Wolverines at home getting Chester, but it is all Chester here. Cyclones leading 36-0 in the fourth. Elijah Coleman squeezes through for a huge play, 50 yards right to the cusp of the end zone. And a couple of plays later on fourth down, Coleman goes airborne to get in. Wolverines would score late, but no stopping these Cyclones tonight. All Chester here, 44-6 over Woodruff. A few more scores to show you tonight. Greer beating Lawrence 49 to 7. Whitmire over Great Falls 61 to 28. McCormick beating Ware Shoals 20 to 8. And Broom keeps on rolling 46 to 7 over Travelers Rest. Week six of Friday Night Hits is in the books. Our thoughts and prayers are with Chesney High School and the Chesney community in this unimaginably challenging time. That'll do it for us here. Hug your people, look out for each other. We'll see you next week.